What's happening, people? It is Brian AllsWouldNeverSay.com, and today's video, like promised, is going to be about recovery. Now, I know a video about recovery does not seem interesting. It is not sexy. It is not about building a bigger deadlift, but recovery is kind of the missing piece of the puzzle. A lot of people will go to the gym and they will work super hard. A lot of people will even keep their diets clean. Some people will keep their diets clean. But the truth is you don't actually get stronger or bigger while you're actually at the gym. That all happens later while you are recovering. So in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the recovery methods that I personally use that have worked really well for me over the years. Now, this is especially important if you're a little more in the later ages of your lifting career. Now, I am 36 years old. I'm getting ready to turn 37 next month. That is not old by typical standards. However, when you throw in 23 years of absolutely beating up my body and total abuse, kind of makes me like the Golden Girls with traps. Now, some of this information is going to be recovery, especially the stuff that you're doing outside of the gym, the other 24 hours a day that you are not working out. And some of it is going to be prehab. So the last thing that you want to have to do is rehab an injury because you were stupid with your form or you didn't pay attention to your recovery or your prehab. So I'm going to cover a little bit of that that will hopefully keep you stronger and a little better every single time because if we can get you recovered faster or stop injuries from happening, then you're gonna get a little bit better. Say you can get 10% more out of each workout. Well, 10% may not seem much in one workout, but 10% over a thousand workouts is going to be substantial. So doing these things is gonna help a lot. It does not matter if you are a power lifter, a strong man, a bodybuilder, or just a regular dude who goes to the gym so that he can look good with his shirt off. It doesn't matter. Making your recovery a priority is going to up your game. So let's go. All right, so the very first two things that I wanna talk about should be a non-issue for all of you. Number one is your sleep. If you are like me and you do not sleep a lot, then you need to stay down, but you need a designated rest time. If you are out partying every single night, drinking alcohol out of the bars until two in the morning and then you're expecting to get a good workout the next morning, it's probably not gonna go well. So you need to make sleep a priority. I know that does not sound cool and it's not what you wanna hear, but it is the truth. Your body heals while you are asleep. So you wanna be getting eight to 10 hours every single night. You guys would not believe, if you look up statistics of how many hours the Olympic training team, when they go away to camp and they're training for the Olympics, how many hours a day they sleep, they pretty much train, eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, and they do that for months on end to become the best in the world. If you want to become elite in your sport, you cannot be spending time out at bars till 3 a.m trying to do whatever and getting drunk and sacrificing recovery for a short amount of pleasure, that is not the type of person that is going to get far in anything in their lives. You need to say heck with your feelings because your feelings aren't as important as your goals. You don't do what you want to do, you do what you have to do to get to where you want to be and then once you're where you want to be, do whatever you want. So first thing is sleep. The second thing is active recovery. So. Objects in motion stay in motion. So if you are super, super sore from a leg workout, the next day I would encourage you to get up and just go for an easy walk around for like 30 minutes. Walk around the street, go for a hike in the woods. Just get that body moving because sometimes the worst possible thing that you could do is just sit there. You guys know how old people are always complaining about how bad they're hurting. It's because they're doing nothing but sitting. If you're sitting around all the time, your hinges get rusty. You need to use them in order to keep them feeling good. So I would encourage you, no matter how sore you are, at least get up and go for a walk or move around a little bit or play horseshoes with your buddy. Just do something where your body is moving. That will actually help you recover faster than just laying around doing absolutely nothing. Get blood moving. Blood is what heals. And recovery technique number three is going to be to decompress your spine. Now I have one of these fancy reverse hyper machines that actually does an excellent job of doing this. If you have access to this, I would definitely recommend I mean, you start using that, plus it's gonna build up your posterior chain as well as your lower lumbar area so that it's gonna make your deadlifts go better, your squat's gonna go better, everything's gonna get better using the reverse hyper. However, I know most people do not have access to this. So what I would do if you don't have access to a reverse hyper or some inversion boots, you guys know what inversion boots are, where you like put boots on your feet and then you hang from a pull a bar from your feet and it stretches you out. I know most people can't do that either. So what I would encourage you to do is just do hangs from a pull up bar at the end of your deadlift day or squat day, something where your spine is getting compressed. You need to uncompress it by 
literally just grabbing a hold of a pull-up bar and hang. You can twist from side to side, try to get some pops out of your spine. That will do a lot to help your recovery in the time moving forward. Plus studies have shown that this is really, really good for your shoulder health and you're working your grip. So you can't really go wrong by just throwing these in for a couple minutes at the end of your squat and your deadlift days. Another thing that I like to do is this band hangy thing stuff. And all that you basically do is take a heavy resistance band, pull it down, get it around your waist, and then you are going to flip upside down and then lock your feet into the bands. Now, what that's gonna be doing is pulling the bottom half of your spine up while the gravity is pulling the top part of your spine down, hopefully get some decompression. I like to twist from side to side, get a little bounce in there, and believe it or not, this actually helps a lot. This is a terrific thing to do. If you pull a deadlift and suddenly your back starts hurting, like you know you kind of messed something up or something seized up, if you do this immediately, a lot of times that will shorten the time that you are going to be in pain with your lower back. Give it a try. Technique number four is myofascial release. So you guys have all seen foam rollers. This is kind of a nicer one that you can buy at a store. Uh, it's a little soft, it's, it's not really that great. Uh, this is a like $3 piece of PVC pipe with athletic tape on it. This does a lot better job for me personally because it's harder, it does not compress quite as much, and it's a lot cheaper, so for like $3 you can use this. You guys know how to do foam rolling. You can roll out your IT bands, you can roll out your quads, your hamstrings, your back. Uh, I like to lay on it and slowly work my way up to try to crack my spine as I go. I don't need to keep convincing you guys whether you should foam roll or not. There are entire videos talking all about different techniques with a foam roller and doing all kinds of stuff. I am not passionate about foam roller to be completely honest. I barely use it at all. So you do whatever you want. Uh, those people are probably gonna convince you a lot more than me. Like I said, I don't really use it that much, but from time to time, I will if my legs are really hurting badly or my back is really hurting badly. But you guys, you guys know what you're doing there. Now, as far as something that I do really use, it's lacrosse balls and I use it in my hips. So I will lay down on the ground and there are two pockets, one that is on the back of my hip, one that is on the front of my hip and I will roll around and try to loosen up all those seized up muscles inside my hips because that is where a lot of my lower back pain comes from. A lot of people think their lower back pain actually stems from a lower back injury or lower back seized up muscle, but many times it is in your hip and it's just pulling on your erectors causing the pain. Also, I use this up around my shoulder blades. That does amazing things. That said, if you are in a close relationship with a deep tissue massage person, this is kind of the cheapest form of deep tissue massage you can use. So if you have a friend or a wife or a companion who does that sort of deep tissue massage, I would encourage you to try to bribe them any way that you can to give you rub downs as much as possible. But if not, this little guy will cost you about $2. It's called a lacrosse ball. If you guys are not from uh, America, a lot of people ask about what a lacrosse ball is. Just look it up. It'll cost you like $2 on Amazon. I use this thing every single night. I explain that in another video called Dealing with Injuries that I will link above. Now, lucky for you, lacrosse balls are normally sold in a package of usually five or six. So while you're there, you're gonna grab two more lacrosse balls and some athletic tape. And you're gonna make this thing called a peanut. The reason why it's called a peanut is because it looks like a peanut. That's math, people. But all that you do is take two lacrosse balls and you tape them together and then run tape along the center. Now this works great for rolling up your spine. It can hit your erectors the entire way up without putting pressure on your spine like a foam roller would. So this just sits, rolls right up your spine, rolls you out. It is a great tool. I would encourage you to sacrifice two of your precious lacrosse balls and make yourself a peanut. It will help a lot. And the last thing I like to do with lacrosse balls is they conveniently fit in the loading hole of a plate. So I'll put it inside there and then that will give you extra pressure and a handle to push down on your quad or some other area that you can't use your own body weight to push down on. Now two other tools I like to mention are the stick. And yes, it is just called the stick. I'm sure it has a more technical name, but I know the brand name is the stick. This is a generic version because I'm too cheap to buy the real one, but this works great for working on smaller areas of your body and you can do it yourself. So you can roll out your quad, you can roll up your hamstrings, you can roll out your calves, you can roll out your arms, but you need someone else to do it. But this thing works really well. It's easy to throw in your bag and just work out any knots or adhesions that might show up while you are training. And the final tool is a new addition that I love a lot and it's called a trigger wheel. So this works great on like forearms and biceps. If you do strongman, your biceps are going to be sore a lot. 
and your radial nerve is going to be acting up all the time because your grip work gets hit so constantly. This little trigger wheel is amazing for rolling out little tiny areas. It doesn't work as well on your legs because you can't get quite enough pressure, but for your arms and your forearms and getting all in between the fibers in your forearms, it is absolutely amazing. I love this thing. You can pick one of these up for like $20 at Elite FTS, I think. And technique number five is going to be about what you can do at home in your bathroom. And no, I'm not gonna show you videos. It's a family friendly channel. But I'm not gonna lie to you, they are absolutely miserable. So all you do is fill up your bathtub with cold water, the coldest water possible. Do not add any, add any hot water whatsoever and then dump a bunch of ice inside of it and then you're going to sit in it. Now, if you were very much like me and your bathtub is too small, it's kind of miserable because you need to do things in two parts. If you guys jump in a super cold swimming pool or super cold lake, you kind of test it with your foot and you're like, oh no, oh no, this is gonna be terrible. But then you can jump right in and your entire body gets submerged and you get used to it pretty fast. When you are in an ice bath that is the size of my bathtub, you sit down and your lower half gets hit and it takes your breath away when you first get in it. You definitely have a, type of moments there for a while. You're welcome, internet. And then once your lower body can't take it anymore, you need to slag your upper body down into the water where your legs are sticking out because my tub is so little. And that is a whole nother level of misery. And then you just vacillate between those two a couple rounds. Uh, I'd probably just stay in an ice bath, probably like 10 minutes, and it will do absolutely amazing things for your recovery. But it is miserable, but I will say, after you get out of an ice bath, you feel amazing. Like your skin feels tight and tingly, and uh, you are on fire. You never feel better than when you leave something like that. However, it is mentally tough to tell yourself that you are going to jump into that type of situation. Now, if you don't want to go that drastic at first, you can do contrast showers. So, Take your normal shower with your hot water and do whatever you need to do. Get cleaned off and then at the end of your shower, I want you to take the hot water and turn it completely off. And then you're gonna stand there underneath that cold water for about 30 seconds, sing yourself happy birthday, say the alphabet slowly, do something where you're going to take up the time to do that because again, that's gonna take your breath away. And then at the end of that 30 seconds, kick it up pretty much as hot as you can stand. Do that for 30 seconds. Cut it back out, 30 seconds, back hot, 30 seconds. So you're doing a contrast shower, hence the name. And uh, that does a ton for your recovery and it's not quite as drastic as the ice bath. <laughs> it's definitely still not fun though. And then probably the most enjoyable of any of them are Epsom salt baths. That's where you put water in a tub as hot as you could possibly stand and you add Epsom salts. LLD, you can buy Epsom salts at any corner drugstore or you can buy them pretty much anywhere where hygiene products are sold. It will say really big Epsom salt. So you just add a ton of salt to the water and you soak. Now, I would definitely encourage you to not fill up the tub completely at the very beginning because the longer that you soak, it's gonna take more time and the water's gonna cool down and you want that water as hot as possible. So you want to be able to continually add hot water before your tub overflows and that would get ugly. All right guys, so there you go. I was gonna cover a little bit of mobility in this video, but I think I have enough to say about that that that's gonna be a completely different video on its own that will be coming up sometime in the future. But hopefully, this gives you guys some ideas of how you can recover stronger so that you can get back in the gym and give 100% every single workout. Because like I said, if you just get 10% more out of each workout, it may not matter after one workout or two workouts, but after 100 workouts, 10% is really gonna add up and that's gonna be the difference in you winning or losing or reaching your goals or not reaching your goals. So I'd highly recommend that you guys make recovery a priority. Hopefully that helps some of you out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until I see you later in the week, go out, do something amazing, realize, keep working hard, be nice to each other, people, and I'll see you then.